Navigating a Life Interrupted. This is a wonderful study by Priscilla Shira. We want you to join us as we are going to start this study on the 5th of July to the 9th of August. It's a wonderful study. A life of Jonah is the same life we are experiencing. We all want to serve God as long as it is convenient for us. We all want to do his will as long as it's comfortable. We all want to hear from God a message as long as it's not demanding of us, but we need to pass it on to somebody else. Let us just take time these six weeks to hear how our interruption can become God's intervention. So join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. here on Facebook and YouTube. See you every Tuesday. God. This study is amazing. We have done already session one. Today we are on session two. And here I'm with Leanne. Leanne, please just greet. And I'm excited to do this with you today. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Wutsine. Greetings to you all. And yes, as Pastor Wutsine says, the study of Jonah has been an amazing study. We're only on, our, on session two. But who would have thought that there was so much depth in yeah. just those four, four little chapters? Yeah. Uh, so yes, we're very excited to get stuck in and discuss what we've been learning. Amen. So looking at last week, um, we, we covered that an interrupted life is a privilege and a significant life. But this week, I think we're taking it to another direction, uh, whereby it just our study starts by saying the interrupted life is the challenging life. So, like for me, last week actually, as I was going to the privilege part and significance, I'm like, oh wow, there is an opportunity to partner with God and make a difference, and it's such a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> and then today, it, it, it's coming on another dimension, um, but it is, as much as it is a privilege and a significant life, it still is a challenging life. Yes, yes, definitely, it is a challenging life. Um, I like what Priscilla says in her video where if the enemy would never allow you to do anything uh -huh. that requires you to tap into the supernatural power of God. Wow. And so stuff that you can do in your own power, uh -huh. um, he can't, use, not the Lord can't use you, uh -huh. but when he interrupts your life, he yeah. makes sure that you will need him every step of the way. Wow. You can't do it uh -huh. in your own strength. Wow. And it's, it's, it's exciting saying that um, because you see, that's why you see the reality of him uh, calling the unqualified because he equips them. So, and sometimes when you look at the task at hand that the Lord brings across your life, whereby your life is interrupted, really it feels, you, you feel like, this, is this the, am I the right person to do this? Wouldn't you have picked somebody else? But really, it's comforting and encouraging to see that he equips you yes. for every task. He calls you as much as it is challenging. Yeah. <laughs> In John 1, 2, uh, the Bible says, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So we're looking at the assignment that is being given here. This we, we, we discovered last week, of course, like I've just said, that we saw that it is a privilege, but again, uh, for him it didn't sound like a privilege because um, he was being sent where, <laughs> I think, being on his shoes, you also feel the same way. Yes, definitely. Um, he was he was asked the Lord was asking him to go somewhere he didn't want to go he didn't understand why uh -huh. he didn't believe they needed uh -huh. the mercy that the Lord wanted to show them uh -huh. um, they were enemies how could this possibly be yeah so yes I I can fully understand where Jonah was coming from uh -huh. um, in that verse two words that have really stuck out for me uh -huh. is a rise and go. Uh -huh. Because oftentimes when the Lord interrupts your life, he needs action. Mm. You have to get up. You yeah. have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And you have to move in a direction that you don't know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to have all, all, my, all my T's crossed and my I's dotted and I want to know 
or what's going to happen, what's the outcome is ah. going to be. And a lot of times the Lord will say, no, you just have to take the next step. Yeah. And sometimes we are tempted to pray like, Lord, just use me in this comfort zone. <laughs> Don't take me out of it. Just use it. You are God who's able to do anything. You can change this comfort zone to something good, you yes. know, but really talking about arise and go. Him wanting us to go beyond what we are familiar with, going beyond what we fully understand. It is definitely calling for something in us. It, it really stretches us. It really makes us depend on Him because you definitely do not know the next step. Yeah, but you just need to keep trusting Him, arising and go. We, we, we love settling. <laughs> we love settling. Once you have found a comfort zone, you feel like you can spend your life there. But really, we see here that God's plan for these people was greater than his comfort zone. And again, I'm thinking as you are sharing, actually, I'm looking at Jonah, the, the, the point you're saying, like, he didn't fully understand why all of a sudden God wants to reach out to their enemies. So I'm, I'm thinking in my heart, hmm, some little challenge there. <laughs> because the, <clears throat> he had understood that Yahweh was their God, you see that. Yes. And obviously, if he's a child of God and in line with God, obviously the one who's an enemy to him <laughs> is an enemy, obviously, to the Lord. But why reach out in love? You get the point. Yes. Instead of reaching out to them in anger and whatever. Really, it was confusing, I think. But yeah. So I, I, I like um, what the study says. It says God will give you the strength to handle the challenge that you face. So sometimes the challenges we face, we feel like this is beyond us. We feel like I cannot do it. Even in this case, <laughs> it, it, it was difficult for him. It was difficult. I can imagine because it was not just an issue of him being against the Ninevites, but it was his whole nation. So to, 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 to agree to go where God was sending him was turning up around or against what he had known and what they believed as a nation. Yes. You see, so yeah. Yeah, I like that God will give you the strength to handle the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and the next statement she makes is the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity mm -hmm. revealed to us in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord gives us an assignment, but He doesn't ask us to do it alone. Yeah. And I think a lot of times that's where our mental breakdown is is because we, we look at ourselves but I can't do that mm. I'm not equipped to do that yeah. it's like the Lord is like I don't need you to be equipped to do huh. that you I've given you the Holy Spirit yeah if you are in me I've given you the power huh. I've, through the Holy Spirit to accomplish what I've asked you to do yeah uh, huh. and our job is just to be obedient yeah to yield to, to yield. him because really, without yielding to Him, we will miss out a lot of things. We, we, we can only do so much. We can only try to achieve what we can see. But really, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit helps in that even the things we do not know much about, um, He reveals those things. And He gives us really the power, like we, we are saying in, in, this, uh, <clears throat> in, this, in this study. So, uh, down here in my, my, my book, um, the next point actually, I like it, please read it for us. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. all of the greatness, power, grandeur, authority and fullness of God himself mm -hmm. is in you mm -hmm. because of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Amen. So sometimes it's true that sometimes we look down upon ourselves and feel like we are inadequate, we cannot do what God has for us or rather he's calling us to do. But the truth of the matter is that he has given us everything. When Jesus Christ entered our lives, power entered us, <laughs> greatness entered us, you see, possibilities and all the greatness of God is with us. But uh, the key is just to rely on him and allow him to to do those things that we
don't fully understand. Because I think it, it, it is in the human nature to kick and whatever, just to, to operate on what you can see and understand. <laughs> if you can't understand it, it's like... <laughs> I can't understand, I can't so. understand it. So let's not go this way, yeah. We feel like God also is in danger. Like we feel, <laughs> we feel like we're in danger or whatsoever now feeling we could have in that given moment. So yeah, just a reminder that uh, when we accepted, when we believed in Jesus Christ, his greatness, his power, his grandeur, his authority and fullness of himself, and the Holy Spirit himself came and resided inside of us. I think that's a very important thing to always remember. I think, I think it's so sad that so often we we sit and we feel sorry for ourselves mm -hmm. when we have so much mm -hmm. at our disposal mm -hmm. you know we have all that power we have all that authority at mm -hmm. our disposal but we just sit in our comfort zone and feel sorry for ourselves yeah. and go poor me mm -hmm. and i sometimes imagine the lord must go can you just get up mm -hmm. and see can you just lift your head up and mm -hmm. see what i have yeah um, can you see how I've empowered you uh, to do what I've called you to do? Yeah, and, and also I think it goes back to aligning ourselves also with the Lord because in a moment when that page is opened, one gets so excited, oh wow, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Then a, 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 a situation comes and then where are you Lord? And you, you know all those kind of things, it's like our memory is so short, I don't understand it fully, but really we need to keep on relying upon him and that helps us to see things from the, go from the way God sees things than the way we, we probably would judge them. So just relying on him is very key, is very key for us, yeah. I love this next point. Oftentimes, the greatest hindrance of a new move of God mm. in our lives is the last move of God. Yeah. And it reminds you of the book title, Good or God. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the Lord is not calling us to from something bad mm. to something good. Mm. He's calling us from something good to something better, better. Yeah. or something different. Mm. And so sometimes we're serving the Lord and we, it's like, I'm comfortable serving the Lord mm. in ladies' ministry, mm -hmm. but I know in my heart He's calling me to children's ministry, and it's like, I don't really want to go wipe snotty <laughs> noses again, and I don't yeah, want to go yeah. to, this is nice, this is comfortable, mm. this is what I can do. Yeah. And so sometimes also realizing that He's not calling us from a bad place mm. to a good place, He's mm -hmm. calling us to a different place. Yeah. I think that's, that's very profound, because it is easy to miss out his plan for your life. When he has great things, you can settle for, for less because you, you, we, we feel like, oh, okay, I'm doing what God would want me to do. But then we find that as time progresses, like you're saying, he wants you to do something else. But then you find that you're not willing to do where he's pushing you now <laughs> to go because you are caught up in this good. And, and, and probably you have seen him made manifest in that um, ministry you were doing or in whatever service you were giving, you see that. But really it is true that those things can still hinder you to what God has, which is better for you to now, to, to, to move into. And I think, uh, I, I, I think it's, it, it, it's put well at that point for me, it's put well because I also look at things in my life, there are things which I have seen the greatness of God in, in, in those areas and I'm excited, it's like you must keep on holding on those things and yet it's saying it's time to move on, <laughs> you get the point. So yeah, I think we need to trust the God who took us to that um, breakthrough in the first place and allow him to take us, to keep leading us to, to more victories because there are more victories. And if you, you are bound by what you have just experienced, you miss out to what could be. <laughs> you get the point, so yeah. I wonder how many times our obedience mm -hmm. hinders somebody else's breakthrough. Yeah. Because sometimes the Lord wants us to move mm. or to say something or to be in a certain place. Mm -hmm. But because 
our obedience is an answer to someone else's prayer. Yeah. Somebody might just need that message uh -huh. that I'm not prepared to give at this time. Yeah. Uh -huh. To which is an answer to a prayer that they've prayed. Yeah. Sometimes I'm sitting in a position that's comfortable for me, but uh -huh. the Lord has plans for somebody else to take over and to do better than I've done uh -huh. in that position. Uh -huh. But I don't want to move so they can't move into the destiny that the Lord has for them. Wow. So I often, I often think about that. How, how often mm. does our disobedience hinder others? It's actually scary the way you are putting it because it really puts you into perspective to see that you are not living for yourself. Yes. The God you serve has a bigger plan for everyone. And we are, there is a way we are connected with everyone. So like you are saying, your obedience could help somebody else. You see that as you obey, it's not just for you alone. Heaven is glorified. We, we, you change also, you are challenged. God is glorified in your life. And others who are like, like people, let's say people have been praying, like you are saying, and then your moving may be a breakthrough. Not just for one person, but for many. Because as they shift also, somebody else is shifting below them. And, Things are happening, you see, so that, that's quite scary. And it's also scary to see that um, often we, 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 we like to, we, we like to be identical with everyone else, for lack of better words. Because like in, in this case, even with John, he was not the only prophet that time, you see, during his time, there were other prophets and it was, a common thing that the Lord will tell them, you go tell the people this and this, and you go blah, blah, blah. But then his call in this point in time was different from theirs. And yet that's what was probably put him on the run because he was being sent something that was different. We want to be like somebody else. We don't want to be different. We want to be like any other person. And yet I don't think miracles flow just from there. When it takes you to another level, it's because it's time for a new miracle to take place. And I believe we need to come to terms that the fact that we are, you are unique, God will call you to a unique path. The fact that I'm unique, God will call me to a unique path. But it feels comfortable to do what you are doing. You see, it, feel, it, 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 it comes more like a comfort zone of some sort. You see, but it doesn't release God's miracles. So I think reaching a point where you know that, you know what, you know what, the one I am supposed to be like is Jesus Christ. It changes, it liberates you because you look at yourself from the eyes of the maker. And then all of a sudden you can see that the things that seem impossible on your strength, you can do all things through him because he's in you as that power. So yeah, I think it's interesting also to see the power in being different, allowing, not necessarily pushing yourself to be different <laughs> from no way, but allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do through you. Yeah. I think that's such a profound point. You know, we are uniquely gifted mm. for such a time as this. Yeah. You are, you have the gifts that you need to mm. support your husband and yeah. raise your children. Yeah. And your gifts are different from my gifts. Mm. And, and I'm called to mother those children and to mm. be married to that man. Yeah. And to be in that field. Yeah. And, and sometimes we also just judge each other because we're doing mm. it different. Not yeah. realizing that, um, no, mm. they actually, their lives are so different. Yeah. Their lives are not the same as mine. They're yeah. not called, we may both serve in ladies' ministry, uh -huh. but differently because Correct. we are uniquely gifted. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and sometimes it is scary because we human, like you're saying, sometimes we want to do things exactly the same way the other person is doing them, but really not fully understanding the call. It, sometimes it feels like your life is so perfect than mine. That's why I want to be like Leanne, you see. And sometimes some people, you find people, instead of praying like, Lord, may I be more like you, just pray, Lord, 
may I please be like Leanne? <laughs> because it feels like where you are, it's more difficult than where she is. Not knowing everyone experiences some difficult wherever they are, you see. Because God wants us to depend on Him, you see. There is no way everyone has a smooth sailing with, that, with no challenges. There that are would challenges. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> that would be but nice. unfortunately, there is no one who's like that. But when you see that beautiful part on that sister, probably it's because they've obeyed <laughs> some way. That's why that area is shining. But there are challenges with everybody. So the best we can ever strive to become is to become like Jesus. Be the best we can be and obey what God is calling us to do as opposed to running away here. Yeah. <laughs> that leads us into our next point that says uh -huh. God loves to put us in in the challenge because that way he gets to be who he is mm. God. Mm. And so it's in those challenges that he is glorified. Because yeah. it's in those challenges where we need him mm. and we have to we have to cling to him. Yeah. And so he'll be glorified in those challenges. Amen. And so we thank God. We need to embrace interruptions. We need to embrace um, these challenges uh, because really that's where we are really made. That's where character is built. That's where um, strength is built because we, 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 we begin to see things in a different way than we were before. So just allowing him to become God in that situation changes you in a it, it, it changes you in a different way to be honest so it is important that we embrace that I like um, Psalms 37 verse 4 where it says delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart delight yourself in the Lord and he will and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that also speaks to me that really if we delight in him, delight in him, he will give us, he will change us or rather even those areas we feel like are impossible to change. He is able to work on those things as long as we delight ourselves in him. He will align us with his purpose as we delight ourselves here. I was reading that verse from the Passion Translation uh -huh. and they define delight as soft and tender. Uh -huh. And it just made me think about when you met your husband or you're dating for the first time uh -huh. and you delighted in him, you were soft, uh -huh. you were tender, you uh -huh. melted, you hung on every word he said. <laughs> and I'm like, is that not a good representation of how we need to be? Yeah. Of how, what delight in the Lord Means. means where we're hanging on every word yeah. that he says where uh. our thoughts are constantly about him uh. Uh, i'm sure when you met pastor ray for the first time all you could think about all day was when am i going to see him again uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that is what i when i read that verse that's how i can i interpret it is that that's what the lord wants from us yeah is that looking forward that expectation that anticipation uh. of what is he going to tell me next? Uh, what is he going to reveal next? Uh, um, and then comes that he will give you the desires of our heart, uh -huh. which is actually his desires. Yes. Which he has put in us. Uh, yeah. So I like that, um, yeah. the definition of that word. Wow. Psalms 119, verse 36 to 37. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. What a powerful word there. So incline my heart to your testimonies. So it means as we delight in him, <laughs> as we delight in him, really he, no, 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 he, he turns our eyes from those worthless things. The truth of the matter, there are so many things that delays us. There are so many things that are useless that we pay attention to, which consumes our time. But as we delight ourselves in him, I think he also gives us some form of understanding whereby you, you redeem your time. Because we live in a time where there are so many distractions, <laughs> for lack of better words. 
There are so many distractions, but he wants us to stay focused to him. And as we are focused to him, then we get to understand his purpose for us, his plans for us, which are greater than us, which are greater than what we have seen before. Because he says what no, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. That's what he has prepared for those who love him. So I believe that as we delight ourselves in him, as we incline our hearts in his testimonies, he will be made bigger in our eyes. He will be made greater in our hearts. And that will change our walk, that will change our talk, that will change everything about us. Yeah. I like this. When, when it says in the psalm, it says, incline my heart, uh -huh. turn away my eyes. Uh -huh. It's almost saying, Lord, you do it for me. Yeah. You put that burning desire uh -huh. in my heart. It's, uh -huh. it's not leaving it up to, to David me. is not saying, uh -huh. I will. I will do that. I will incline yes. my heart. Yes. I will turn. He's, yes. He's saying, Lord, it's difficult. You do it. You do it for me. Uh -huh. um, which is very. It is. <laughs> It is, an, uh, you can actually speak like him when you have faith in him, yes. you see. It demands you to have faith in him because if you have no faith in him, there is no way you can trust him to do that. So as you, you allow his way to transform you, even the faith in him grows. And then you know that those areas which you feel like, you know what, Lord, there's absolutely nothing I can do now with me here. <laughs> because we do reach those places where you're like, you know what, Lord, I just surrender it to you. I can do nothing about myself here. And then he takes over and he wants it surrendered to him instead of us spending all our time trying to change what we cannot change. Truth of the matter, we may see the faults in us. We may see so many things that we are not happy about. But we need to also realize that we have no power to change our lives. He has the power to change us. All we need is to align ourselves with him, is to allow him, open up for him, open up for his will to be done in our lives so that um, we are transformed. Like in this story we are reading about Jonah in this case. It was not easy for him to go to um, Nineveh. Tashish was the <laughs> easiest. I like it when, 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 when Priscilla actually describes it, that it was like 2,000 miles away from where he was, or rather where God was sending him, but he chose to go to Tashish and spend his own money, you know, that wanting to go where God was not sending him. Instead of going where, where God was sending him, it was just like 500 miles away from where he was. So sometimes we are willing to pay much to go where God is not sending us, as opposed to where he is calling us. And it may look near, but it is challenging. And the good thing about the challenges is that he is there to strengthen us. He's there to make it work for us. So we just need to delight ourselves, need to trust in him. Mm -hmm. yeah. The president says here, the interrupted life not only looks different, mm -hmm. but also looks difficult. Yeah. And as we've just been discussing, I think that's what puts us off so many uh -huh. times. Is, uh -huh. But that is so hard. Yeah. And that is so difficult. Yeah. So, and, and sometimes you're called to walk a path that no one else is walking. Yes. You are called to swim upstream. Uh -huh. You are called to go against the grain. That's what makes it difficult. And you are called to look, and sometimes you might be embarrassed. Uh -huh. you, you know, but Lord... Ah. People are going to think I'm crazy, yeah. but that is your calling. True. It's different and it's going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah. And saying it's, this is your calling, I think if we can all embrace it that way, that we all have a calling and our calling is different. different. If we can embrace it that way, it will make our work easy. Because sometimes the difficulty comes because it's different. You see that. I, I'm not going to be accepted. I'm not, I'll be judged. I'll be what? But we, we, we don't want those things. <laughs> you get the point. But God is calling us sometimes to those things. And he's not calling, calling you to justify the decision or rather 
the walk you have taken. He's calling you out. And if he calls you out, sometimes you don't need to explain yourself. Yeah. But as time unfolds, everybody else will know because that probably will put you in a place where you never thought, like Jonah in this case, after he had agreed to obey, obviously history, up to today we are reading about him, because he obeyed the Lord. A revival that was never heard of broke that time, you see. So sometimes those lead to a different um, actions God is calling us into are the ones that could bring about a revival. Find that we are praying, Lord, we are praying for a revival. And then it take, tells you, take a step, you go this direction, when everybody else is going the other direction. And you're like, no, Lord, why, why me? <laughs> but you've been praying, probably. And God is just coming through, through a way, um, rather a way you are not expecting him. Because I think what really makes it an, an interruption in our lives is that he comes from a direction we don't, we totally not expecting him to. You see, and tells us to do something which we feel like, but Lord, this is... <laughs> You're this asking me to go against a system. Exactly. You're asking me one person mm. to take a step of faith and mm. go against that whole system that's yeah. been ingrained. Yeah. And sometimes that is scary. Mm. It is scary, but it's comforting to know that whenever he calls you, he's there with you. He's present. He will go with you the whole way. He will sustain you the whole way. It, it, sometimes it feels like it's a lonely place, Lord, you're calling me because everybody else is going that other direction. But he's saying, I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will walk with you. You see, so I believe walking with him is more beneficial than walking with everybody else. Yeah, yeah so. The next answer in the book is when God places an abnormal calling on your life, mm -hmm. it is because he has abnormal results mm -hmm. he wants to produce through you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just reinforcing what we've been yes. talking about. When he calls you to it, mm -hmm. he will equip you he will equip you to it. Yeah. To, to do it. Yeah. He will. He will. And it's not it's not always easy. I I think of Joseph he knew he had a calling, mm. you know, he had those visions from the Lord. Mm. But his journey from, from those visions mm. to when he was eventually in power in Egypt wasn't a pleasant one. No. Um, and it goes, so it goes back to the interrupted life. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, it's, you know, you look at Esther and mm. she was called into the palace against all the odds. Mm. And she had to stand up in the face of adversity, in Correct. the face of possible death. Correct. She had to stand up, and but she was called mm. for such a time mm. as mm. that. Yeah, it 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 is different. <laughs> it is different, and it is difficult. And sometimes I'm I'm also looking back to people. We have so many examples in Bible in, in the scriptures. I'm looking at people also like Elizabeth. Elizabeth, she had prayed for. A child before but the Lord decided to to keep it until this point in time where it, it, it could even feel embarrassing <laughs> at her age now to be blessed the way she was blessed and sometimes to be honest it, it does feels like an interruption as much as it's a blessing but it does feel like an interruption because it has come at a time that is not expected you see so I think, I, I think really to understand that we are created and we are born for such a time as this, it's very important. It helps us to embrace what God has for us. And there will be no other better time for us in our lives than we have at the current time. Yeah, this is our best time. So all the best we can do is to rely on him. We can trust him, we can trust his word, we can trust the Holy Spirit. If there is a time he can use us, it is in this life. You see, we cannot push it away, push it away because we are not going to get any other opportunity. Yeah, it is in this life. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. While we've been talking about it's challenging, it's difficult, it's mm. different. Mm. You know, Priscilla also says here the interrupted life is an accountable life. Wow. The Lord is demanding a response. Yeah. You know, he's, he's put the call out there and he demands 
Oh, I shouldn't say demands. Demand seems like a harsh word. But he, is, he requires. Yes. He requires a response from us. Uh -huh. And then he doesn't. Con God does not convict us to condemn us. He uh -huh. wants to store relationship. Amen. It goes back to last week's study where it's a privilege. Uh -huh. So yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's challenging. Uh -huh. Yes, it's different. Uh -huh. But we need to look at it differently and uh -huh. look at it as we have been given the privilege uh -huh. of being able to help. Yeah, we have been given the privilege of being able to to impact this kingdom, uh -huh. to impact eternity. Uh -huh. So you always have to look at it's challenging, it's difficult, uh -huh. but it's a privilege. It is a privilege. It is, and also it goes back. It takes us back to the point we did mention that um, when one person's one person's obedience leads to an opening of many. So when we look at it really like that, we do see that it's a big thing. It's far bigger than us. It's a big thing. And the fact that you are chosen to be different, it is a privilege. <laughs> it, is a, it is a privilege. It, it may be difficult, but yeah, just hang on there. Trust the Lord and he surely will come through for you. You see the bigger picture. Once everything is done, you, I, I'm thinking of Joseph like you were making an example about him. You know, you think God has forgotten about what he had promised, you see. We're looking at all the things he went through, but Lord, where are you? That's the question you ask, where are you? But then it's, you, you, it's like you answer and say, I'm there. <laughs> I'm the one who's making um, everything work in the way it has worked. You see that what is meant for evil is turning around for good. Yeah, the brothers here, they intended to kill him, but they couldn't kill him because I was there. You see that he is sold and he's going to be from being loved, being the favorite. He goes to be a, a slave. <laughs> you get the point. Then you say, where are you, Lord? How do I become a slave? He's saying, I'm there because even in that slavery, you are promoted to be the best. You see that. Even in jail, all, all the way, you can see the hand of God through all the challenges that he faced. Sometimes I think we put our focus on the challenging situation than putting it on God. The truth of the matter is that whatever challenging situation you may be going through, God is present with you. You can look at the problem or you can look at the bigness of God because he wants to show himself strong in every situation. It may look like an impossible situation but he is present and he wants to be known through that situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, in John 1.3 uh, the Bible says, but John arose up and flee to Tashish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship which was going to Tashish paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tashish from the presence of the Lord. This is interesting to see how, I, I looked at the first verse we read that the Lord came to him and said, rise and go. <laughs> and then this verse says, but Jonah rose up and flee. <laughs> So he obeyed part of it. <laughs> you <made the> point. <laughs> he, he, rose, part of it. he rose, but then he flee to a place where God was not calling him. You see that. And his intention, you can tell in that verse, that it was to run away from the presence of the Lord. Knowing fully well that the God he served was omnipresent. He was, he, he, he was omnipotent, you know, but yet he still tried to escape from him and go to a place where he was not called to go to. And there's they, they, they something actually which I found interesting when uh, in this study when it talks about the, uh, the part of him paying the fare that was going to Tashish. I heard that actually there are some uh, who believes that he did not just pay like the the fair, but it was like he kind of paid for, paid for the whole uh, uh, thing, ship, to take him there where he wanted so that he has control and whatever, to go as fast as he wanted and whatnot. But really it's, it's, it's scary to see how costly it is to go where we want to go as opposed to where God is sending us.
a comment uh, running from God will often cost you more mm. than you're willing to pay. True. And I find it quite amusing that we actually think we can run from God. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and we but we try. And we try. We try. Yes. We may not run like he did, but in many different ways, we try to run away from what God is saying. And we think we can be successful. I think in our, in our ladies' group last week, and one of the ladies was talking about even the cost, not just the cost of the ship, mm. but the cost of being in the belly of the whale uh. and what the acids could have done to his skin and, uh. and those three days in the whale, in the whale, oh, in the fish, in, yes. <laughs> not the whale, <laughs> Sunday school coming out there, um, how those, the cost even physically yeah. that he had to pay, so it wasn't yeah. just the financial cost, uh. but it was the physical cost. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so much, it's so much. So running away from the Lord <laughs> is costly, like we are saying. You can find ways to run, but it will cost you much. It will cost you. And, and, and what is scary actually when you continue reading that verse is that when he ran, when he took that path, it was God who sent the, 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 the winds, you get the point, in the sea. It was God who made that still, I mean to say that sea not so still. You get the point? So it, it means there's absolutely no way you can run away from God and be successful, you see. You can choose to be there, but he will come and reach out to you in many different ways, you see. So just being obedient from the beginning, I think would also have saved Jonah's life from those acids you're talking about, <laughs> from that belly fish, from the, that, eh? From the, the belly, fish. yeah, belly of the fish, okay. belly of the fish. <laughs> from the belly of the fish. So, really obeying God will save you a great time. It will save you. Um, it will save your identity because when you talk of us, it maybe came out looking funny. I can think, but yet he still went where God sent Thank him. You. So, if we are obedient to the Lord, the quickest, I think, it will save us. Lots of. Uh, trouble. <laughs> That's a lot of trouble. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Our next point says God does not convict us to condemn us. He wants us to restore. He wants to restore our relationship. So sometimes um, it feels like actually it's what the enemy does. When you know that we have fallen short, you feel like there is a kind of payment you need to, to, to bring before God. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus Christ paid it all. And because Jesus paid it all, uh, our conviction is not really to condemn us, but it is really to restore us to the place where God wants us. And if we can look at ourselves that way, it will save us the guilt and shame in our lives of things which we may have gone through. We can see God's grace through all those things we have gone through in our lives. So I think that's a very powerful point right there. Yes, no, it is. Um, that we can rest assured that God is so gracious that even when mm. we do run mm. from him, mm. he, he brings us back. Yeah. He brings us back. Yeah. To, and for us to realize that, as Priscilla puts it here, sin is a never-ending downward spiral, mm. a never-ending downward cycle. Mm. So we will run and we can run and we can run from the Lord, but eventually yeah. He will bring us back yeah. to where we... He, but, he but, will keep pointing us back. Uh -huh. he'll, he'll keep, we can run and He'll keep going, uh -huh. no, we end that uh -huh. way, and I'll run that way, and He'll keep saying, no, that way. He uh -huh. will keep turning us. But, but, but I think also it's very profound that as Jonah was running, there came a time in his life where he allowed God's will to happen when he repented. I think that is a very important point because sometimes we think we can run, we can outrun God. But the truth of the matter, it goes back to what you say. We run, but he will, st will still find him. <laughs> we run, he still finds us somewhere to say, you know what, mm -mm, this is the way. So my prayer for you as you listen, you may be running also like Jonah today. 
may you not run forever to a point where you find yourself now it is judgment you see and you find you wake up you find it's judgment time you find you have run all your life because bottom line you end up where he is <laughs> you see that you it's either you do his will or his judgment will be upon you so i pray that you don't run that far that <laughs> the judgment falls on you so my prayer for you is that as he shows the pointers the pointers then there um you will respond to those positively like he did this guy um jonah because when he was asked about his god he was open to say that you know what i'm running away from god and you know what what can save you here is just to throw me in the ocean you see that he knew that it was just between him and God, nothing else could, could fix the situation he was in. So I pray that you realize some of the things are a way or a, a wake up call for you to say, Lord, here am I, let your will be done in my life. Yes, so it's, it's been a good, the session too has been a good, lo lots to think about. Mm lots to consider correct very challenging as to where is it that the lord is asking me to go where is it that i'm mm. being resistant mm. where is it that i'm i'm running mm. because oftentimes we're running and when we are exhausted because we can't go anymore and we say but lord why and he's like because you're running a race that i didn't ask you to go. yeah I asked you to go that way and because mm. you're running from me you're expending way more energy mm. and way more time and, and you're not using my strength. And you're not using my strength, <laughs> yes. And you're, you're running in a direction I didn't ask you to go. Yeah. I asked you to go here and uh -huh. I will enable you to go here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you very much, Leanne. So I pray you were blessed today as we looked at this study. Um, it, it, it's quite an encouraging study. Allow to be different, as difficult as it may be. Allow God to send you where you least expect him to. Just allow him to do what he wants to do through your life. It may be challenging, but he's present with you. It may be challenging, don't run. Just wait on him. Just say, Lord, give me the heart. If the heart is not there to go where he's sending you, ask him to give you the heart. Ask him to give you um, the kind of encouragement you need that will take you to where he is calling you. So today, just make a decision to stop running because you can never outrun God. Make a decision today to allow him to transform you through his word because he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever you can ask of him. So today, I pray that will be your prayer. Then please pray for us as we are ending today. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That you are God. We thank you, Lord, that we are your handiwork, yes. that you have created us for a purpose, that you have gifted us mm. uniquely, Lord. You have gifted us for the purpose that you have called us to, that you do not ask us to do anything that you do not equip us for. Yes. We just thank you, Lord, that you will change the desires of our heart. We mm. thank you that we can turn to you at all times and that we can rely on the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just thank you that we don't have to do this. We don't have to do life in our own strength. Thank you, but we have the ever-present Holy Spirit to guide us. We just thank you, dear Lord. I pray for each and every lady, Lord, and I just pray that even as they've listened to the session, that they might just realize that they need to heal to you, mm. that they need to delight themselves in you, and you will give them the desires of their heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Stay blessed and join us again next week, same time. God bless you. Thank you for joining us in this wonderful study. I pray that you have grasped the truth of God's word and you have allowed it to transform your life. Let's meet here again next week, same time. God bless you.